What's up, Brozone? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another audiobook. So today we are reading the third story in my book, Showtime, which is the um, the competition that I ran. Fazbear, Fazbear Rights, sorry, not Rights Two. Uh, definitely not based off of Fazbear Rights. Um, today we are going to be reading the third story through the static by Psychic himself. Um, yeah, I. I, I cannot wait to read this to you guys because this is actually a really good story, a really dark story. Psychic's first story as well for the first competition I ran was really good as well, but it was way too long, <laughs> way too long. He's done better this time. So anyway, let's go. Let's go straight to that. Uh, eh, let's go straight through the static. <clears throat> the circus music permeated the entire tent. David hated the music. Well. That wasn't exactly true. He liked the music fine, but the way it was all around him and half-muted, he just couldn't stand listening to it all day. It was like the music was just a shadow of its true self, just like me, David thought. It was true. He felt like a shadow, a forgotten relic of a time long past. People saw him, but just didn't think anything of it. David didn't fault them for that. He wasn't much. He, just, he was just a normal man in his twenties with black hair and a shaggy beard. The only feature of his face that he didn't mind was his green eyes. David looked around at his tent, empty. He sighed. Another day, another attempt to perform a show with no results. He guessed his magic show would just no longer appeal to the general public. With another heavy sigh, he jumped off the stage and made his way to the tent entrance and stepped outside. The soft glow of the evening light shone into his eyes. He squinted and looked around. The carnival around him was alive with energy. He saw clowns making balloons for screaming kids, games and attractions like dunk tanks and dart throwing. His eyes drifted, as they often do, to the Mega Wheel, Utah's biggest Ferris wheel. They claimed to be the biggest in the entire US, even though David doubted if that was true. Um, David walked past and looked at the time monitors. Next to the wheel were three old-fashioned monitors that showed the times that the ferris wheel was working. It was nice to have the time in a convenient space, but every night when they turned them off, the monitors would go to the static and play white noise. David hated the white noise, worse than muted carnival music. Hey David, a voice called. David looked over and briefly felt better. Hey Cam, David's friend Cam ran up to him. Another no-show show. Cam asked. I'm sorry, man, that stinks. David nodded in agreement. If you want my opinion, you need to find something new to bring people in. Thanks. Never thought of that one, David said in a jokingly sarcastic tone. Hey, it's good advice, Cam laughed. Cam smiled at David. The two had been friends for what felt like forever. It it was Cam who had first shown him around the carnival when David was looking for a venue for his show. If David was being honest to himself, he would admit that Cam was part of the reason that he signed on here anyways. He claimed that it was just because a lot of carnivals weren't open during 1994. Ever since then, they had been inseparable. Even though David got the feeling they both wanted to leave, neither of them did. The two talked for a bit, then Cam looked at her watch and started walking backwards. Oh, I thought Cam was a a guy. (laughs) Uh, Oop, I gotta run. They needed help. Uh, stocking the, the snack shelf. Cam ran off in a hurry and David started walking. Something new. How was he supposed to find something new? David walked into the nearby forest, lost in thought. He was running a failing circus. People didn't want to see his tricks anymore. They wanted simple entertainment that they didn't have to sit through. Wham! David's foot had slammed into something and David couldn't save his balance. He fell into the dirt. What the hell? He started... Then he saw what he tripped over. It was something covered in dirt. After brushing dirt aside, David saw that this thing was made of metal, painted white and blue. David, now intrigued, started pulling this thing out of the dirt. After a couple minutes, David realised what he had. He had one of those animatronics that are in those restaurants that kids always liked. Kids always liked. That's it. David jumped up. This was how he was going to save the circus. David started lugging the robot back to his tent. See, this kind of paragraph is something that I feel like I would definitely see in Fazbear Rights. It's kind of the um, 
kind of what we're going for with these stories um, in this competition. So if I ever do a third one, then that's kind of a good tip. Right, like Fazbeth writes. Um, David was awake all night. He sat the lifeless animatronic on his, work, on his work desk and started cleaning it. He couldn't think about anything except this robot. He heard the muffled noise of the carnival closing down for the night. He even heard the white noise from the monitors, but it didn't bother him. Not right now. After 20 minutes, he had all of the dirt covering it removed. David could now tell that it was a robot fox. It had a white body with light blue paint and what looked like a speaker on his chest. He didn't know if there was dirt in its joints, but he would take care of that later. Next, he had to turn it on. After searching the robot up and down for 10 minutes, he opened up a chest cavity and found a switch. He flipped it. Instantly, the robot's eyes lit up with an electric blue light. David jumped back in shock. Hello there, the voice, the robot's voice boomed. What the, it, it talks? David asked out loud. The robot stood up and started moving in, in David could only guess was its idle movements. Can you hear me? David asked, half joking. The voice, uh, the robot stopped moving and looked in its direction. Wait, can it actually hear me? David wondered. Then he realized. I wonder what your name is. David pondered out loud. It's showtime, the robot boomed. <laughs> David jumped back again at the loud voice. Showtime, David asked, regaining his composure. I is that your name? It's showtime, the robot responded. Okay then, <laughs> I'll call you showtime. It's fitting because you will help people bring, you will, you will help bring people to my show. The robot only stared at him. It was a bit unnerving, but if it would bring kids back to the circus, he'd do it. Well, Showtime, tomorrow is the big day. We'll knock him dead. Showtime only stared at him. David awoke in cold sweat. He was so disoriented that he didn't even realise his alarm was blaring. What was going on, he thought. Then he remembered. He'd been having a nightmare. David couldn't remember all the details, but what he did remember sent chills down his spine. All he could see was static and all he heard was, ni was white noise. He couldn't scream for help. All he could make out through the static was a figure. It kind of looked like, like a, a fox. David shook himself from his thoughts and turned off his alarm. 30 minutes later, David found himself setting up showtime in front of his tent. He was about to turn it on when from a way, ways away, he heard Cam's voice. Uh, David? Cam yelled. David turned with a smug look on his face. Morning, Cam. He responded. What is that thing? Cam asked with deepening confusion. This? Oh, this is showtime. David said happily. Oh my god, you're out of your damn mind, Cam. Uh, Cam said exasperated. You told me to find something new. So, I did, David said in a sing-song voice. Now to bring in the audience. David turned to Showtime and turned him on. Showtime's eyes lit up and instantly start started. Come see the show, Showtime bellowed. Today at 12pm. You won't want to mi miss this. David and Cam backed up. David with pride, Cam with fear. You, you got a robot to promote your show? Cam asked, bewildered. Yep, see you at 12, David said. David ran off, leaving Cam with Showtime. David was ready. The tent was packed. Showtime had done his job. The murmurs of the crowd had almost drowned out the muted carnival, carnival music. And now, a voice bellowed through the speakers. Get ready for the best show you will ever see. The curtains parted and David stepped out into the spotlight. Hello, my friends, his voice rang out, now amplified by the microphone he had. It's showtime. David started his act. It was a mix of comedy and magic. The crowd loved it. He nailed every punchline. Each trick was met with oohs and ahs. David was sure that this was the best show he had ever put on. Until it wasn't. He was getting the crowd ready for the final trick when he looked up to see Showtime standing in the tent entrance. David faltered for a second before regaining his composure. David started walking toward the crowd, readying them for the grand finale when Showtime ruined it. David met Showtime's eyes, and they suddenly turned to static. Showtime opened his mouth, and out of the speaker came the loudest white noise David had ever heard. It was worse than nails on a chalkboard. People screamed and ran. David fell to the floor, writhing in agony. 
Then, as quickly as it started, it stopped. David looked up, but instead of seeing his glowing circus, all he saw was rows of empty seats. It was ruined. David's sadness was quickly replaced with anger. How dare that stupid robot ruin his show! David was fed up with Showtime. The dang robot was supposed to help him, not destroy everything he had worked so hard to build. David ran outside the tent and scanned for Showtime in rage. Eventually, David found Showtime outside of his workroom. David scanned the ground for anything he could use. Then David spotted the axe that many people in the carnival used to cut up firewood for their weekly fire pits. David picked up the axe and approached Showtime. Showtime turned, and when seeing David, he said, It's Showtime! It would be the last thing Showtime ever said. You're right it is, David retorted. David struck Showtime with the axe, over and over. Sparks flew, metal broke, the sounds were awful but fulfilling. After five minutes of swinging, Showtime was nothing more than a pile of scrap metal and circuit boards. Burn in hell, David spat at the pile. David, now satisfied with his work, walked away. Jesus. <laughs> David sat in his bedroom, counting the profits he had made from the show. At least Showtime had been good for one thing. Even though everyone left a bit earlier than he had wanted, he'd still gotten paid. David put the money in his safe. Maybe he would use it to move and try and get a job that was actually stable. Maybe he'd ask Cam to come along. David laughed at himself. What time is it? David wondered. It had, it had to be time to go to bed, right? David got up and walked outside. The calm night air felt good on his face as he walked to the time monitors. When he reached them, he saw that they were static. This didn't bother him like normal though. After the pain from showtime, this was nothing. David was about to turn when the monitor on the bottom left showed something new. At first, David didn't want to know, uh, didn't know what he was looking at. Then it hit him. It was showtime. It was showtime's head with the words Please stand by, circling it. David felt his hands go numb. He realised that he was clenching them so tightly that they were turning white. David wanted to run, but something was stopping him from doing so. Then the bottom right monitor lit up. Showtime again. Please stand by. Again. What was this? This couldn't be happening, right? The top monitor started flickering. David was just about to make out Showtime's head for a third time before all the monitors went black. What the? He started. Then all three monitors lit up with a blinding light. David tried to block the light with his hands, but it was no use. The world went black. When David awoke, he had no idea where he was. The first thing his brain noted was the fact he was floating in some sort of void. Before that thought could cause panic, his other senses kicked in. His sight and hearing returned. David was surrounded in static and his mind was bombarded with white noise. It was worse than Showtime's inter... interruptment. Oh, it's, oh, that's what it says. It says interruptment. Wow. I cannot believe I messed up that word. It was worse than Showtime's interruptment. Um, David writhed in place. It wouldn't end. It would never end. David was only able to make out one other thing. Through the static, he saw the silhouette of a fox, and its laughter rang in his ears. David didn't know how much time passed, but eventually it became unbearable. With one last scream for help unheard, his sanity was lost forever. Cam walked the carnival grounds looking for David. She had seen him tearing apart that robot, and she was relieved. It had creeped her out. Cam stopped by the time board. No David, she sighed. Cam was sad. She assumed that he had finally skipped town. After that final show, she didn't blame him. She wished he had at least said goodbye. Cam started back towards her sleeping quarters, not even noticing the strange shadow of a man floating in the light of the monitors. <laughs> I love it. I love when stories end um, with like the perspective of another character and they're like, they miss something. Um, this was a really good psychic. I, I actually really like this. Keep this kind of uh, story writing up. I really enjoyed it. Uh, that's all I really got to say about that one. Um, it's a great ending to the book. Well, actually, no, that isn't at the ending, is it? Because we've still got my story to go. Um, but a great third story. Uh, this is a really, really strong story. This is great. Um, so anyway, the final story that we've got to read is New Friends by me. 
Um, like I said in the last uh, in the last video, this is actually one of my favorite stories I've ever written. So I'd appreciate it if you listened to the audiobook. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you later. Goodbye.